Hi everybody, Jason Klom with the Comedy on Vinyl podcast. I'm listening to a comedy album a day for all of 2017. Um, if you're watching this on Instagram, check it out, Comedy on Vinyl. Actually, that is to say youtube.com slash comedy on vinyl uh, or bit.ly forward slash comedy album a day. Uh, so, uh, I've picked two albums. I'm on a bit of a jag uh, for the last, actually for the last several weeks. I mean, I've been picking some of my more political albums and then uh, slowly but surely uh, got into uh, the Vaughn Meter copycats, um, and as I'm listening to these, you know, I did a little bit of research. So, um, 1962, the first family comes out. I think I might have talked about this before. I've been collecting uh, first family albums for a while. I'm just fascinated because it was just the biggest selling comedy album of all, of all time at this point. Um, and actually, I was just doing a little bit of research uh, on Billboard. Uh, December 1962, uh, you can find uh, there's a, you know an ad in Billboard saying, congratulations to the people who created it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and the word Vega is in there um, because it was a big thing. That, uh, that was one of the gags that Von Meter did. Um, well, one of the things about you know this, this hugely selling album is that everybody ripped it off. And it's at this weird junction. Um, so, you know, Von Meter's first family, it's not his album, but he's the star of it, comes out. And then Alan Sherman, at the same time, comes out, comedy music, I guess, I'm trying to think, 62. As far as, like, big names associated with comedy music, you had your Spike Jones, but Alan Sherman had this particular charm about him that I think people reacted to. And then, so, when those two come together, um, I guess this happens? My Son the President? Now, a musical satire. Oh, boy. That's a stretch. Um, starring Christopher Weeks, who's, that's not actually the name he ended up using. He's on Barney Miller, and I apologize, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, and in a, no insult to the man's uh, career, um, because he does a fine Jack Kennedy. And actually, Fran Stacy, who is somebody I cannot find much information uh, for beyond a ton of results saying she's on the cover of a Playboy magazine. That doesn't help me. She's an actress. I would love to know more about her because her Jackie Kennedy is quite good. I like her Jackie Kennedy more than I like his Jack Kennedy. Um, this is, again, it's called My Son the President, which is, a, you know, titled after I just did My Son the Ripoff. Uh, the, my Son the Ripoff. My Son the Copycat. Um, my Son the President is, you know, a parody in terms of title of Alan Sherman. But the music stylings on this are um, not really a lot happening on this it's uh, but i mean the gag of course the gag in the not of course you don't know the the gag in this is that christopher weeks as jackie kennedy and fran stacy as jacqueline kennedy are both doing just the voices talk singing they are cacheting it uh because that's that's a word now uh but it's it's uh it's i am doing this uh for an entire song so imagine if he was doing something that's popular now but i'm so old i can't name a popular song right now but he's just talk singing all the words, and they're a parody song. Uh, not nearly to the level of an Alan Sherman. Uh, you know, not nearly to the, the level of anybody parodying Alan Sherman either. Uh, this this is, um, it's weak. It's just, it's just a weak effort. Um, now, I will mention, though, that Christopher Weeks did end up being in um, uh, a Deep Throat comedy. It's not Deep Throat, but it did star Linda Lovelace. Uh, I'd have to look it up. I'm so sorry. I don't care enough. But what's important, though, is that apparently Vaughn Meter was also in that film. Um, and I had no idea. Uh, I also found out recently that Vaughn Meter does a brief appearance on, on The First Family Rides Again, which is uh, in the 80s when Rich Little played uh, Ronald Reagan, and it's a First Family, you know, it's coming back. Um, but the most interesting one that I listened to tonight, and I picked two because I'm playing catch up here. Cause the the comedy album a day thing, you know, I'm, I got to play catch up, um, and it's harder when it's a shorter month, right? Does that make sense? That logical? Probably not. I'm just behind on a few days. Um, so I pick. I have all of Von Meter's albums. There's the first family that he stars in, first Va family volume two, which I thought about listening to tonight, but I chose not to. Uh, there's the second coming, which I've not listened to yet, and actually I'm saving for an episode with uh, one of our favorite guests. Um, but then there's also this, okay? This is Have Some Nuts. It's really, honestly, it's a fantastic cover. Um, the have, the, the, the word play on the word nuts is a, uh, I don't know when it started. It's, it's, it's boring when you, when it, when I, when I've seen it a million times, mixed nuts being a 
crappy Steve Martin movie from the from the nineties. Um, this was released by Verve. You know, Shelley Berman, other people. You know, music label first, but then released the comedy albums. Um, so this is his. This is Vaughn Meter's follow up to the First Family and the First Family Volume Two. So it was released in nineteen sixty two. Um, in 1960, early 1963, respectively, I think March of 1963. This is recorded. So think about this. This is recorded in November of 1963. Now, I when we first talked about the first family on the Comedy on Vinyl podcast, uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun to talk about because I'd been looking forward to, to hearing the full thing. I'd heard bits and pieces. Had to do a little bit of research to understand, you know, why some of the jokes are funny. Um, had my good buddy Alex Salem on to talk about it, and he's, you know, a solid eight years younger than I am, and knew more of the Kennedy references than I did, so it was a really fun discovery. Um, and then we talked about Vaughn Meter's career, famously flagging as a result of John F. Kennedy being assassinated. What I, I did not know until tonight, uh, sorry, one second, gotta adjust something, but I didn't know until tonight was that this is recorded in November of 1963. This this is probably recorded a matter of days before... I, it doesn't have a date, but uh, a specific date. But it was probably recorded right before JFK was assassinated. So the assumption that I made, wrongly, was that he made this album in response to, well, let's, let's, let's get this, you know, let's get this image off of me uh, now that the president's been assassinated. I don't want to be... So, no. He was just trying to make a career move. I think smartly. He didn't want to be JFK. Now, it's unavoidable. He's got the look, the teeth, and the eyes are unmistakably very Kennedy. Uh, his voice, if you listen to this, unmistakably very Kennedy. But he recorded this thing right at the worst time possible. And then releases it in early 1964. Now, there are a couple bits on here where you hear him doing for a line or two, like a reference to his Kennedy impression. Uh, and that's that's the hardest part to hear, but the thing to deal with is that he just, he, ha he had appearances canceled, um, you know, immediately after Kennedy's assassination. And then at this point, this was released in early 1964, nobody gives a shit. Nobody wants to see this face again. It makes it more tragic to me, of course, that he recorded it when he did. This is just the worst timing in history that he could not possibly be blamed for. Um, this is one of the many tragedies of Vaughn Meter. He's fascinating. And the biggest tragedy then on top of that, this is, that's a coincidental tragedy. It's interesting. It's ironic. It'll make for a great movie if, if Bill Hader gets that movie done that he's been talking about. Uh, Bill, if, if, if you're not doing anything with it, uh, I'd be happy to work on it. Um, the biggest tragedy is that this is a really good album. Um, there are some bits that are not great. Uh, including the title, the, not the title, but the first track, We Shall Return, which is a parody of a, a film about Cuba Demigrays who, uh, a fictional account of them going to assassinate and succeeding, apparently, in killing Fidel Castro in the, in the film. Um, it's filled with a bunch of guys doing stereotypical Mexican accents and some kind of Cuban accents. Um, I, my modern sensibilities couldn't get past that to the point where it's not, it, it, it's not that great a sketch. I'd also have to see the movie to see if anything parallels, but the accents are offensive it just beyond it just that's just just it um that said the second track called give till it hurts uh is uh, about uh is, is everything here is a social parody uh is, is, is satirical um uh there's bits about uh, the height of fashion is probably the best track on side one where it's uh, a guy at a clothing store trying to help two guys who we've slowly learned are KKK members, help them get fitted for their sheets. Uh, the one character is incredibly gay. We know this because he lisps and lilts. Um, now that said, that is not the gag of it. The gag is more, I, I mean, I think the gag is more ha ha ha. It, it's more funny that this would offend a KKK member rather than uh, isn't it funny that he's gay, uh, which, you know, so I'll give a pass on that. Um, and then, uh, album two, uh, side two of the album has got a lot of stuff. I mean, there's, there's a bit about, uh, the FBI, uh, doing, um, the, there's a communist meeting and their commie doesn't show up because they're all FBI members except for their one commie. Just as perfect comment on wasted resources as perfect comment on the, the low level zero threat that commies posed, which I think is appropriate. Um, 
There's a comment on uh, unions, which is actually very even-handed. It makes fun of the extremities of unions. It makes fun of people who are in the middle. Uh, it also it also in unions. Um, and then the final bit is a bit about censors. Um, uh, I, I could go into detail, but that that will be, you know, saved for when we do a full album. So I apologize. I'm kind of all over the place here and not giving a lot of details. Uh, but suffice it to say, have some nuts as opposed to my son, the president. Have some nuts is quite good. It, it, it compelled me. This I was bored because it was the same thing over and over again. You can only go so far on Jackie Kennedy doing a song like this. It's a good impression. But that was the bit that, that she was talk singing. And then, you know, this sort of, ah, hello, how are you? I'm doing Vaughn Meter doing this. They reference Vaughn Meter. I mean, these are people also, a lot of these albums, they feel like they're excusing themselves for ripping off Vaughn Meter by being meta and referencing Vaughn Meter. It's like, uh, you know, we're doing a thing. Everybody knows what we're doing. You bought the damn album. Uh, another thing to point out, this is not the only album that came out at the same time called My Son the President. I've never seen the other one. Uh, but looking in old Billboard articles, My Son the President, there are two, at least two albums at the time that came out like this. Um, the article on Billboard I, I read mentioned just a bunch of the ones that we've already talked about on here, and probably other ones that I don't have. If you know about them, actually tell me about them. Uh, tweet us at Comedy on Vinyl. Email me, Jason, at ComedyOnVinyl.com. I'm getting a lot of responses to this. It's great. Um, I would really love for you to subscribe uh, here on YouTube if you haven't already. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Give us a listen. Uh, this week, we've got coming up our uh, sixth anniversary episode. Today, actually, we celebrate six, an six years of comedy on vinyl. When the sixth anniversary episode uh, comes up uh, on Wednesday with James Rabaniak and Mike Warden, my longtime producer and infrequent guest lately. It's excited, exciting to have him. But uh, yeah, today is six years of comedy on vinyl, the podcast. And um, it's one of the many reasons that uh, the comedy album a day thing is important to me. Um, I got to get through these damn albums. Um, and at some point, I think I'm going to start giving some away. Uh, I actually got a very thick file of album repeats, and I'd like to give some of them away. So, um, I don't know, maybe we come up with a contest or something, if anybody has any interest. I mean, I don't have a ton of rarities, but I've got a shitload of albums. I've got a shitload of repeats because I'm always hunting down. I'm going to keep the most pristine copy, uh, but I'm also not going to spend a million dollars to do it, if you want to talk about, you know, my, my aesthetic in terms of collecting. Um, so anyway... Long story short, My Son the President, not that great. It's just straight up not that great. Um, but that's okay. You know, there's a lot of stuff released at the same time. Just not that great. Um, have some nuts. Trying so hard. Trying so hard. And for, you know, the one race, the one kind of racist track, not kind of, well, one racist track. And the other ones that are like, you know, there's a whole one thing called Night Court. It's all, it's all dogs and, and, and dogs are... The dogs are people in, in a court. It's fine. It's cute. Uh, but the satire's strong. Like, when the, when the satire's strong here, it's really strong. Not written by Von Meter, should be pointed out. Written by, uh, let's see, Michael Ross, Ron Friedman, and Larry Siegel. All their credits are on the back here. Here, take a screenshot of that and enjoy. Um, but uh, I really enjoy it. Um, it was a lot of fun to listen to, but it just made me sad. It just made me sad because of of what happened to Vaughn Meter. But that said, eventually, after the career died, he created his own, recreated himself. He played music, bluegrass music in Maine. Um, and you know what? From, from from all accounts, passed away a happy man in 2004. Um, I hope so. Because I think he was, I think he was rather brilliant. Uh, it takes a lot of skill, you know, to know, oh, crap, I look and sound a bit like this guy. Let me tweak it and then, you know, use it. Why would you not? Why would you not? And then all these other people are like, I can do Vaughn Meter. Well, all right, that's fine. I guess you can do that. You know, pick somebody else, maybe. You know, but uh, the one bonus thing, the one thing that you, if you read about it in the Billboard uh, article that I found as well, is that uh, you know it didn't affect sales at all. These the other crap was coming out. So you know, for for all that, people were still more into the original, and people must have recognized that these other guys were uh, you know just trying to be bargain bin replacements that just didn't happen. Um, but just one more time, awesome cover. I think it's a, I think it's a good album. Um, some of it actually it ages well because they're they're about kind of universal concepts, especially the the one about the KKK. Um, that's it. Follow me at jclom on Twitter if you want to. Follow us at Comedy on Vinyl everywhere you can at us, and go to comedyonvinyl.com. Go to stolendress.com to see my other podcasts. I've got books, I've got movies, uh, all kinds of shit that I do. And I'm going to keep doing this for the rest of 2017 and possibly beyond. We'll see. i got to get through all these albums. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, have a good thing.